Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about coding multiple motors in your FRC robot. Now, this sounds a little bit more complicated than it actually is, um, but the thing to keep in mind is that there are different situations where you have multiple motors, and when you have multiple motors in those different situations, you might need them to move in interesting ways. So there are two main situations in which you can have multiple motors that we're going to be talking about. And you could have any combination of those two situations as well. So the first thing that I want to do is talk about, like, well, what do we do when we want to code multiple motors, right? So you have a first option, which is kind of obvious. Let's just write out code for every single motor. Okay, like literally just that, that's it. Just write out code for every single motor. Or option two is we could take advantage of the built-in CTRE library code that could help us, you know, sort of simplify the code that we have to write. Okay, so the first situation in which we're gonna be analyzing coding multiple motors is when you have multiple motors, but some motors need to follow a main motor, right? So let's say you have three motors and you have one primary motor and two motors that follow the movement of that primary motor, right? How do we actually go about just saying, okay, primary motor dot set the percent output and it'll control all three of those motors. Like, how do we do that? Now, for those of you who are wondering, well, in what situation will I encounter this? It's really common to encounter with a drive base. When you have a drive base, it's really common to have multiple motors on each side or rather not each side, but for now, what I want you to consider is having multiple motors move at the same time. And so this is one of those situations where, okay, you're gonna have, instead of coding each motor individually, just code one motor and that one motor's code will apply to all of them, all right? So in this situation, we're gonna add first three more motors, all right? So we're gonna do talent effects and we're gonna call the first one primary motor equals new talent effects. Let's use device ID two for now. And we're gonna do talent effects we're gonna do follower motor one equals new talent effects motor three, or add E three rather, and then talent effects follower motor two equals new talent effects four. Okay, so the idea, right, is that I want this these follower motors to follow the movement of this primary motor. So basically the end result should be that I should be able to set the primary motor speed and the follower motors will, will follow, right? So we're gonna do the standard stuff we did in the previous video where we're gonna reset the factory uh, config. We're gonna set the motor to its factory default configuration. So I have primary motor dot get configurator dot apply new, new talent effects configuration. And then I have follower motor one dot get configurator dot apply new talent effects configuration. And then finally I have follower motor two dot get configurator dot apply and then I have new talent effects configuration. All right, cool. So that's step one, right? Step two is to apply the current limiting. Now, when you wanna apply the same current limit, right? In this case, we're gonna keep the same current limit of 80 amps. When you wanna do that, you don't actually need to make a new current configuration, right? Because all you really need to do, because we already have the current configuration, right? So just apply the same configuration to the motors, right? So I can do primary motor dot get configurator dot refresh and then current configuration. I can do the same thing with the follower motor. Get configurator dot refresh. It's gonna be current configuration. And then the other follower motor, right? Okay. And then we're gonna apply that current configuration to all the motors. So primary motor dot get configurator dot apply. Oop, not another set of parentheses, current configuration and then follower motor one dot get configurator dot apply current configuration. Okay. And then follower motor two dot get configurator dot apply. It's gonna be current configuration. Lovely. Okay. So now we've set up our motors, right? And we've got the current configuration all set up. So now the next step, right? is to actually set up that follower stuff, right? So in order to actually make follower motor one and follower motor two a follower motor, right? Because we want it to follow the primary motor, right? So 
there's an extra bit of configuration we need to do, right? So configure the follower motors. So what we're gonna do is do follower motor one dot set control. And here we need to pass in a specific control request. So what type of control is this motor doing? It's following, right? So we're gonna make a new follower. And the mass, and so you'll notice that there's two arguments. First is the ID of the motor that you wanna follow. They call it the master ID. And then you also have whether or not you wanna oppose the direction of the master. For the sake of these follower motors, we're not going to oppose any directions right now. So the ID of our primary motor, right, if we look back up, is two. So it's gonna be two and then false. We're not gonna invert any directions for now. And then you might have to narrow, you're gonna hover over it and then quick fix and then just import follower and then we're good. And then it's gonna be the same thing for follower motor two, set control, Oop, no parentheses, new follower two, and then not is autonomous. That was just an autocomplete thing. If you ever hit enter, just type in false. Okay, so now, right, we have these motors set up as follower motors following the motor with ID2, which happens to be a primary motor, and we're not opposing any of its directions. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is actually, well, turn on these motors, and it's very simple. We don't need to write three different set commands. All we need to do is primary motor.set, and let's run for 50% speed, and we're done. That is all you need to do. You don't need the overhead of writing, you know, three different set commands. Now you might be wondering, wait, wait a second, like if I had just, you know, did the dumb thing, which I said it was dumb, but did the thing where I just literally wrote out code for every single motor, well, I wouldn't need these two extra lines of code, right? And in that case, you're right. You don't need those extra two lines of code, but what ends up happening is when you have commands that make the motors do a lot of different things, it's going to be really redundant to do primary motor dot set, then follower motor one dot set. Like you're gonna have to repeat that in your code. And typically when you view a system that involves follower motors, it's usually viewed as one thing as opposed to three separate things. So if for example, you're talking about your code to a teammate that might not be super good at code, you can just say, oh, you know, the motor's, you know, speed is being set here. And if you have, you know, your followers being set up in one system, then it makes sense that, okay, you know, I only have one line of code to write to output this one system instead of three lines of code to do one system, you know? It just adds a level of cohesion within your code that makes things a lot more readable, all right? So now to verify that this actually worked, right? Let's go to simulate our code. Okay, we're gonna sim our driver station. Again, make sure your driver station's already open. I already have mine open right here. Okay, now we have, you know, that's our original my motor, but I want this guy, right? ID2, ID3, and ID4, all right? Let's go ahead and enable and see what happens. And just like that, we can see that the just by setting one set command, right, on one motor, we have output being sent to all three, all right? So that's the idea about followers, and I'll show you that one more time, take a look. So that's the idea with follower motors, all right? Now, like I mentioned, there is another classification of coding multiple motors, and that deals with inverting motors, all right? So you might be wondering, like, okay, I have these motors, but in what case do I need to have one motor spin in the opposite direction of the other? And I will introduce that case right now. So let's understand motor inversion. So in what situations do motors need to spin in opposite directions, all right? So imagine the following situation, all right? You've got two motors, all right? One motor is on the left, the other motor is on the right. Both of the motor shafts, right? So the things that are actually spinning are facing inwards. And we need to code the motors to spin in the same direction. So at first glance, you might think, hey, wait a minute. Okay, so there, there's one on the left and then there's one on the right. So if I just like set them both to like 50%, right? That should be fine, right? And at first glance, you know, it might seem normal. Just use the same percent output on both sides, but there is an issue. Let's look at the way these motors spin. So this is what the motors look like if you haven't actually seen one before. Now here's the thing, right? We have to look at the angular direction in which the motor is spinning, all right? So if you look at the shaft, right? So if you look at this metal thing, like head on, right? Going forward, right? So spinning in like the forward direction. So in this case, in your case, going towards the screen, right? is clockwise, but if you look at the shaft from this perspective on the left, on the right motor, 
going forward is counterclockwise. And you can see this animation, right? You can see that this animation spinning clockwise, this one's going counterclockwise, right? So we need to invert the direction of our motor, right? Follow these arrows. Look, they're clearly spinning in different directions. This one's clockwise, this one's counterclockwise, right? So in order for them to go in the same direction while maintaining this orientation, we need to invert the motor direction. So here are some potential solutions, right? We can use inverted percent output. So as an example, right, we can do 0 0.5 for the left motor and then negative 0 0.5 on the right motor. But what happens if you want to invert like five motors, 10 motors? How do you keep track of which motors need to be inverted, right? Option two is to use CTRE's library to help you out. And we can use the motor configuration that we did before to set its inversion, all right? So this will allow you to command both of the motors to operate at 0.5% output, right? So you don't have to change that number. You don't have to add a negative, right? But since the direction of one of the motors is inverted, they will go in opposing directions this time. So like the motor that you invert will go in its opposite direction instead. And lastly, the third thing is to ignore the problem. This is a bad idea, right? If you have motors facing in this orientation and they go backwards, you could potentially destroy these motors, all right? Depending on the mechanism. So we're gonna use CTRE's library to help us out, all right? So here's exactly what we're gonna do. So first thing I wanna do is actually declare two new motors, all right? I wanna declare a left motor and a right motor. So let's do talent effect, just to get some practicing, you know? Left motor equals new talent effects, let's do five. And then talent effects, right motor equals, equals new talent effects, I do six. Okay, let's get the factory default. Uh, by now, hopefully you have the hang of doing this. Uh, okay, yep, and then the same thing for the right motor. Okay, cool. And then we need to configure the current limit, left motor. You can see this gets a little exhausting, but it's a must do, it's a safety thing. Okay, then let's apply the current configuration. So left motor dot get configurator dot apply. It's gonna be current configuration. And then the same thing for the right motor, all right? Okay, cool. All right, so now, right, we have all our motors set up, okay? And the next line of code that we're gonna add in, all right, is to set the right motor to operate inverted. So it's literally just right motor that's set inverted and it's just gonna be true. We want it to operate inverted. So now the neat part about this, right? Oh, it's freaking out. Let's see if we can fix that, true. There we go, okay. So now the neat part about this, right, is in order to get the motors to go like in the forward direction or in the same direction, right? Now I can just put the same percent output speed, right? So I can do left motor that's set 0 0.5. I can do right motor dot set 0 0.5. And they will both operate in an inverted manner. So let's see if we can see that in simulator. Yep, use the real driver station. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's get driver station open. We're gonna focus on five. You can see the ID here. Um, and then six, and then hit enable. And there we go. You see, with the same percent output speed, look at the duty cycle and motor voltage values. You can see that this one's positive and these ones are negative. So they're going in the opposite direction, thereby successfully doing exactly what we wanted to. All right. So few key things, few key things, right? Make sure you understand why we actually need to invert. And then the second thing is to make sure you actually do that set inverted Boolean. All right. That's pretty important. And so, yeah, this is, again, so you might be wondering like, why can't I just pass in a negative, right? And again, it's all about code readability and understanding the code in relation to your mechanism. If you have two motors that operate the same mechanism and one's oriented um, 180 degrees of the other, in terms of code, right, you would want to assume that they both go at the same speed, right? So it doesn't quite make sense to have one be positive and one be negative because if someone else were to read your code, they might be confused. Like, hey, why are they different if they're both being used to make the mechanism go in the same direction, right? It doesn't quite make sense. But if you set inverted, then the person reading your code doesn't even have to worry about that. They can just look at the value and think, okay, they're both going at the same speed, cool. And they're both going in the same direction because you don't have to worry about making one negative or the other. So 
there's kind of a balance here between understanding code and making sure that the code that you read applies to the mechanism that you are writing code for. And that's why we set inverts and set followers in the first place. All right. So that wraps up this section on multiple motors. Thanks so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video.